Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the pterygopalatine fossa. We have two pterygopalatine fossa, one on each side. They are present below the apex of the orbit. They are bounded by the maxilla, the sphenoid bone, and the palatine bone. Okay. So, the pterygopalatine fossa is located, you can say, the pterygopalatine fossa are pyramidal in shape. and is located located under the apex of the orbit bounded by the maxilla, sphenoid bone, sphenoid and palatine bones. We got the location of the pterygopalatine fossa. So they are present below the apex of the orbit. We have two pattern fossa, one orbit here, another one is here, this is the orbit, and it is below the apex of the orbit, here, and another one here, bounded by the maxilla, the sphenoid bone, and bounded medially by the palatine bone. Okay, they are pyramidal in shape. So, if you go there, how they look like. So, they are pyramidal in shape. So, if you draw like that way, pyramidal in shape with the base at the top, apex of the down. So, if you draw a pyramid, okay, if you draw a pyramid. So, if you go there. So they are pyramidal in shape and this is a fossa bounded by three bone. Then we'll go to the boundaries. Boundaries anteriorly bounded by the posterior. Posterior superior part of the of the maxilla so it is bounded by the poster superior part of the maxilla so it is behind the maxillary sinus bounded by the upper part of the posterior wall of the maxilla okay so upper part of the posterior wall of the maxilla certainly behind the maxillary sinus anteriorly posteriorly posteriorly it is bounded by the by the pterygoid process and the greater wing of the sphenoid bone greater wing of the sphenoid bone 
Okay, you got that. Posterior palm there. Then, as because it is a pyramid, anterior, posterior, and we go to the lateral bounded, laterally, it opens into the infratemporal fossa through the pterygomaxillary fissure. It opens into the Infra temporal fossa through through the erigo maxillary fissure, erigo maxillary fissure. Okay, we got lateral bond there. Medially bounded by the perpendicular plate of the palatine pole. Medially is bounded by the medially bounded by it is bounded by the perpendicular 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 plate of of the palatine bone. Okay, we got the medial boundary. We go to the superior boundary or roof area. Superiorly it is bounded by it is means the pterygoplatine fossa is bounded by by the under surface of the body of the sphenoid bone by the under surface of the body of the Spinoid bone. Okay. We got anterior boundary, we got posterior boundary, we got medial boundary, we got lateral boundary, superiorly. Now we'll go to the inferiorly. Here, inferiorly. Here, inferiorly, anterior posterior wall are coming close together, or other wall also come together. So inferiorly, how it is bounded? Inferiorly closed by the pyramidal process of the palatine bone, angle between the maxillary and pterygoid plate. Okay. Inferiorly closed by the pyramidal process. of the palatine bone. Okay. Palatine bone between the maxilla and pterygoid process. Between the maxilla and pterygoid process. Pterygoid process and maxilla. We got the boundaries of the of the pterygopalatine fossa. Okay, we got the boundaries. Now we go about the contents of the pterygopalatine fossa. We'll go to the contents. What are the contents? Okay, we have the its name is the pattern fossa. So it contains the ergopalatine ganglion. 
any good. And I find ganglion. What is ganglion? Ganglion is the collection of nerve cells outside the central nervous system. What is nuclear? Nucleus or nuclei? What is nuclei? Nuclei is the collection of nerve cells inside the inside the brain or central nervous system. So we got the ego pattern ganglion one, then we get the maxillary artery maxillary artery we got the maxillary artery which part of maxillary artery the third part of maxillary artery then we'll get the maxillary nerve maxillary nerve is a content of the it is a content of the egoplatin fossa and the maxillary nerve is a branch of the trigeminal nerve or fifth cranial nerve this is sensory ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve is sensory mandibular division of trigeminal nerve is mixed contain both motor and sensory fibers okay so maxillary artery third part is the part of the maxillary artery that passes between the two head of the lateral pterygoid and that enters into the pterygoplatin fossa okay there is a third part of the maxillary artery which is a artery and its branches its branches maxillary nerve and its branches okay we got the contents of the pterygoplatin fossa okay we got that now we we'll go to the communication so let me make the content here so this is the pterygopalatine gain okay we got the pterygopalatine gain okay pterygopalatine ganglion is the largest parasympathetic peripheral ganglion it, it provides secretomotor it provides the secretomotor function to the lacrimal gland nasal glands palatal palatal glands pharynx and sinuses the pterygopatin ganglion is an autonomic ganglion parasympathetic it is one of the four parasympathetic ganglion of the head and neck region other three are the ciliary ganglion, otic ganglion, and submandibular ganglion. But this is the largest of all. It provides secretomotor fibers, the glands of the nasal cavity, palate, pharynx, and lacrimal gland. It is also called the hay fever ganglion. Hay fever. Hay fever ganglion ganglion because of the allergic reaction sinusitis okay associated with the over secretion by the parasympathetic stimulation so there will be sinusitis and that's why it is called hay fever ganglion because it is associated with sinusitis and allergy to hay, hay fever or allergic pop pollens I and mean the environmental pollens okay we'll not go there so it is the tegopatin ganglion is the largest peripheral parasympathetic ganglion okay that is present inside the tegopalatin fossa this is tegopalatin fossa 
this is the pyramidal shape okay we got that then we got the content here then we must get the content this is suspended by the by the maxillary null here is the maxillary null so this is suspended by the maxillary null okay this is the maxillary null and this is maxillary null that is the second division of the trigeminal null that is pure purely sensory and we have maxillary null entered the pterygopartum fossa through the foramen rotunda foramen rotunda okay so we are now going to the communications communications of the pterygopalatine fossa okay so this fossa is communicated posteriorly and above through the from and rotundum through which the maxillary nerve enters the pterygopalatine fossa okay this is one communication we have also not to the pterygoid canal here not to the pterygoid canal now to the pterygoid canal okay that is very important not to the pterygoid canal is so important to us why it is so important this is the nerve which is formed by the union of the greater petrosal nerve and deep petrosal nerve. They form the nerve to the pterygoid canal. Okay, over the foramen lacerum area. Okay, or inside the foramen lacerum area. So we get the nerve to the pterygoid canal. This is important here. So this is the this is the pterygoid canal so how not to the pterygoid canal is formed it is formed by the union of the greater petrosal nerve this is parasympathetic This is parasympathetic preganglionic. Okay, one another one is the deep petrosal nerve. That is postganglionic. Post ganglionic sympathetic nerve. Okay, so now to the pterygoid canal contains these two combined together. Okay, they go side by side in the same nerve sheet that is the nerve to the pterygoid canal. It has two components one is the parasympathetic preganglionic, another is the deep petrosal nerve postganglionic sympathetic. These two together forms the nerve to the pterygoid canal. Okay, we have also communication to the pharynx by palato vaginal canal. Palato vaginal canal. We have also communication to the anterior near the roof. Here, there is the infraorbital fissure. Orbital fissure. Okay. 
we have communication to the oral cavity through the greater than lesser palatine foramen. Okay, this is the greater and lesser palatine foramen. Okay, we got that. So our tail of the time fossa is communicated posteriorly to the middle cranial fossa, like middle cranial fossa through the foramen rotunda, now to the tailgoat canal. It is communicated to the pharynx by palato bedanon canal. It is communicated to the oral cavity through the greater and lesser palatine foramina. It is communicated anteriorly to the orbit, okay through the infraorbital fissure okay so these are the communications of the so again communication anteriorly with the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure here posteriorly with the middle canal fossa via the foramen rotunda with the foramen lacera through the pterygoid canal with the pharynx through the palato vaginal canal okay that is the communication posteriorly inferiorly to the greater and lesser palatine foramen, greater and lesser palatine foramen, foramen, okay, that is the anteriorly, it is to the orbit communication. So we got the boundary content and the, and the communication. We also learn that the nerve to the pterygoid canal contains the greater petrosal nerve and the deep petrosal nerve. This is pre-ganglionic. Why it is pre-ganglionic? Greater petrosal nerve. Greater petrosal nerve is coming from where? Greater petrosal nerve is coming from the geniculate ganglion of the facial nerve. What is the geniculate ganglion? Geniculate ganglion is located in the petrous part of the temporal bone close to the medial wall of the middle ear cavity. From the geniculate ganglion, we get a greater petrosal nerve that comes out through hiatus in the petrous part of the temporal bone. There is hiatus. And the geniculate ganglion is connected to the lacrimatory and gustatory, gustatory nucleus. Okay, we got that. So this is parasympathetic pre-ganglionic. So we have the parasympathetic preganglionic we go to the pterygoplatin ganglion there will be synapse here synapse then we'll get postganglionic fiber those fiber will be distributed through the branches of the maxillary nerve okay deep petrosal nerve this is postganglionic why it is postganglionic where is the preganglionic neuron the preganglionic neuron is located in the intermedial lateral gray horn of the T1, T2, T3 thoracic spinal cord. Okay, so that is the intermedial lateral gray horn. Then it will go out through the ventral nerve root, spinal nerve, through the white termite communicants to the spinal, to the sympathetic chain of ganglion go to the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion and there the pre-ganglionic neuron and post-ganglionic neuron will start for this from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion so this is post-ganglionic sympathetic that will also go through that but it will not not synapse it will be distributed with other branches of the maxillary nerve without any synapse in the pterygopalatin ganglion because it is postganglionic. It has synapse at the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion, not here. Okay, we got the, the communications. Okay, now we got the, the contents of the of the pterygopalatin fossa we just discussed the third part of third part of 
the maxillary artery we discussed that third part means the part which enters the perigomaxillary fissure and that passes between the two head of the lateral perigoid muscle okay this is third part of the of the maxillary artery and it has multiple branches like that posterior superior alveolar branch posterior superior alveolar branch okay we got that it has the branch like that of the infraorbital branch infraorbital nerve you can see it nerve okay oh here the artery so say posterior superior alveolar artery artery not now then infra orbital artery okay infra orbital artery we got that then descending palatine artery descending palatine artery okay we got posterior superior alveolar artery that should supply the molar teeth and premolar teeth infraorbital artery will come out through the infraorbital foramen okay descending palatine artery will follow the palatine canals along with the nerves okay we got that we have the artery to the palato vaginal canal palato vaginal canal that will supply the pharynx okay even we get artery to the pterygoid canal to the pterygoid canal you get artery to pterygoid canal and we get the sphenopalatine artery that is a important artery the sphenno palatine artery this artery is the terminal branch of the maxillary artery this is the terminal branch of maxillary artery okay but maxillary artery is a terminal branch of what maxillary artery is a terminal branch of the external carotid artery where at the level of the neck of the mandible what is another terminal branch of the external carotid artery that is the superficial temporal artery this palatal artery very important it, it goes through the sphenopalatine foramen it supplies the nose the sinuses heart palate anteriorly and it will it will anastomose with the with the greater palatine artery a part of the descending palatine artery so we got the branches of the third part of the these are the branches of the third part of the maxillary artery okay now we'll go again what are the contents of the tegopatin fossa tegopatin ganglion the maxillary nerve third part of the maxillary artery we covered the third part of the maxillary artery now we'll go to the maxillary nerve okay maxillary nerve Okay, what are the branches of maxillary nerve? Again, very much similar to that of the the artery. We get posterior, superior, alveolar nerve. 
that innervates what? The upper jaw molar, premolar teeth. Okay. One, these are the branches. Okay, one is that. Then we we'll get the infraorbital, infraorbital artery, infraorbital nerve, infra orbital nerve. Okay, we we'll get the gyromatic nerve. It has two division: gyromatico facial, gyromatico facial. Another one is gyro metico temporal metico temporal okay we got that and this is very important gyro metic nerve gyro metico temporal through which the tegoplatin and postinglionic parasympathetic fiber will go here and it will innervate the the lacrimal gland Via the lacrimal nerve. Okay, so this carries the postganglionic parasympathetic fiber from the telgopalatine ganglion and it will be distributed through the lacrimal nerve. But the lacrimal nerve is a branch of the ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve. Okay, we got posterior superior nerve, infraorbital nerve, then gyro, gyromatic nerve. Okay, we'll get the Palatine nerves, okay. Greater palatine nerve. The greater palatine nerve should innervate the heart palate. It go just on the medial part of the upper jaw teeth and the gingiva along the heart palate. Okay, it goes anteriorly and it come out almost the entire part of the heart palate. Okay, we got the the greater palatine nerve. Then we have the lesser palatine nerve. Lesser palatine nerve. They go together. Greater and lesser palatine nerve. Lesser palatine nerve goes posteriorly along the soft palate, and it sub supplies the soft palate and the tonsil, the palatine tonsil. Okay, we got the, the pharyngeal branch. We have also another, we have the posterior alveolar nerve, infraorbital nerve, gyromatic nerve, greater palatine nerve, lesser palatine nerve. Okay, we got that. And we have sensory, sensory nerve, sensory nerves to the Pterygopalatine ganglion. Pterygopalatine ganglion. Okay, we got that. We got the branches of the maxillary nerve. Now we we'll go to the pterygopalatine ganglion. This ganglion is flat and is the largest peripheral parasympathetic ganglion. One of the four parasympathetic ganglion of the head and neck. So, what are the branches of the pterygopalatine ganglion? Of the pterygopalatine ganglion. Pterygopalatine ganglion branches, it will follow the branches of the maxillary nerve okay it has the autonomic ner nerves the postganglionic fiber of the pterygopalatin ganglion will be distributed through the branches of the maxillary nerve okay suppose these are the branches sensory branches of the maxillary nerve this is the gyromatic nerve so postganglionic fiber will go to the gyromatic nerve go to the gyromatico temporal branch and it should, should be distributed through the lacrimal nerve that is a branch of ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve to the lacrimal gland. So branches of the egopathic ganglion are the branches of the maxillary nerve. Okay. 
we got that the branches of the trigoplatin ganglion. So now we learn some of the clinical notes. Clinical notes. Okay. So what happened if the trigoplatin ganglion is damaged due to any reason? Its main purpose is secretomotor fiber to the glands of the nasal cavity, palate, pharynx, and lacrimal gland. So if this is damaged, then there will be no lacrimation. Okay. No taste sensation. Sensation from the palate, palate and the pharynx, okay, and the pharynx, we know that our taste bars are present in the tongue mostly, but our heart, our posterior part of heart palate, the soft palate and the pharynx also contain taste bars, okay, okay, we got that. So, this will be disturbed, no lacrimation and test sensation will be disturbed but anyway we have a lot of test barred in our tongue so that will not be very important but this is very important here, okay, one clinical note is here. Then sometimes what happens, surgeon need to tie the third part of the maxillary artery to prevent excessive bleeding from the nose. So. So, in case of epistaxis, epistaxis, that is bleeding from the nose, bleeding from the nose, what happened? Sometimes it's very difficult in rare occasion, not always, it, very it is very difficult to control bleeding from the nose. So, surgeon may approach by transentral approach, we call it trans entral approach to tie the third part of the part of the maxillary artery okay so that may happen on the allocation so I go on the and just retract the upper upper lip go through the gingiva, open the maxillary sinus and go with posterior wall and open the that part and go to the tergopalatin fossa to tie the third part of the maxillary artery. Okay, this is not commonly practiced but it is a way to go inside the inside the tergopalatin fossa. So that's all about the table button fossa and this content. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me and please support my channel. Please subscribe my channel. Have a nice day. Bye now.